Sanctus Apostolos, Peter, me Paolo, Momne, Sanctus e Vos, Fratres, orare pro mere Dominum Deo Nostro. Amen. Miseriato veste, omnipotenza, io se di misti spiccati svesti, spedduca al vostro vita, mi terranam. Indulgenziam absoluzione, mi remissione, perché tolo nostro contivo al nobis omnipotenza e misericos dominus. Teos tu conversus vivificabis nos. Ostende nobis domine, misericordia mezzuvam. Domine, exaudi orazione mea, Dominus Vobiscum, corremos. Orramos di Domine di Merito Santo, non ci vuole ancora vedi. Durante il Dio Omni e Angeli, e io ho dibito e l'età di questa Sion, e le esultate o figli e gli idoli, dove lo segno avete giunto e te te l'hai detto in sene molti. Gloria a Patria e Pidio e Spirito e Santo, si coterati in principio e le nuche in sempre e le sen secola, secolo con Amen. Adorate Deo, omnes angeli, e io ho dibito e l'età di questa Sion, e te esultate o figli e gli idoli, che gli è l'Isa. Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, 
Kiriye Eleisan Kiriye Eleisan Gloria in excelsis Deo Domine Deus Rex Celestis Deus Pater Omnipotens Domine Fili Venigeni de Iesu Christi Domine Deus Sanius Dei Filius Patris Vitoris Pecato Mundi Misericordias Vitoris Pecato Mundi Sissipe de Precazione Nostra Vitoris de Dextra Patris Misericordia in Nobis Moriam Tu Solus Santus Tu Solus Dominus Tu Solus Patris Jesus Christ, con Santo Spirito e Gloria Dei Patris. Amen. Deus Pater Omnipotens, Domine Dominus 
Sezi ezduri yere dinimi kustu, çiba ilum sisiti potum da illi. Ogeni fainis karbonis inis koncere stupira kapul eus. Noli vinci amalo, sel vinci in bono amalo. Alleluia, alleluia. Dominus regna vera in tutte le terre, le tende in sere morte. No, me no es Sequencia Santi Evangelii secondo Matteo. In il loro tempo lei, con le scenese di Gesù, le monte se cose sono e un trope morte, e le cielo prose venivano a dorabat e un dicens, domine si vis potes me mondare. E le extenis Gesù, ma non te tingi e un dicens, pollo mondare. E confessi mondate slebra eios, e ai tiri Iesus, fide in nemini di se servate ostendete sacerdoti, e ove munus fa pregeve moises in testimonio illis. Come in altri dove si capanna ove ci si dà un centurio rogavans eios ed dicens, Domine, pure a me, o sia, si rinnova paralitico, se male toro e quieto. E la ieri, ieri, Gesù, e confini a me il corabo e io. E risponde il centurio, a ieri, Domine, non sono digno, sono rinnova il suo tetto, ma me, un settanto di fiabo, e se n'ha per pure il remeio. Non è ego, o non sono su pari, sta di costituto, a ben su ben mili, te settico, o in, pari a pari, a li veni, et veni, e se o me o fac, e facit. Oggi è stato in Gesù, mi sa, tu sei se sei quinti, tu sei dixit, a ben dico, voi non veni, tanto in fide, in Israele. Dico a te, ma vovis, quod mundi aboriente l'occidente venire, fai convenire con Abraham e Isaac e Jacob in regno celovum. Filiate il regno di cinti in tenebra esteriori, ubiere fletto, se sfletto, tensione. E dice Gesù, centurioni, 
The epistle for today, the third Sunday after the Epiphany, taken from the letter of the Apostle St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, be not wise in your own conceits to no man, rendering evil for evil, providing good things, not only in the sight of God, but also in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as is in you, having peace with all men, not revenging yourselves, my dearly beloved, but give place unto wrath, for it is written, Revenge is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. But if thy enemy be hungry, give him to eat, if he be thirsty, give him to drink, for doing this, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. Be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil by good. And the Holy Gospel is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, when Jesus was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him, and behold, the leper came and adored him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, stretching forth his hand, touched him, saying, I will be thou made clean. And forthwith his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See thou tell no man, but go, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And when he had entered into Cephanum, they came to him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, and is grievously tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion making answer said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man subject to authority, having under me soldiers. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. And Jesus, hearing this, marveled, and said to them that followed him, Amen, I say to you, I have not found so great faith in Israel. And I say to you that many shall come from the east and the west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into the exterior darkness. There shall be weeping and a gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go, and as thou hast believed, so be it done to thee. And the servant was healed at the same hour. Just a couple of announcements. The schedule for this week is in the bulletin. Note that we have the first Friday of the month, this Friday, if you have not yet made the Nine of First Fridays, the preparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. It's certainly something to be done and brings many graces for yourselves and for your families and the promise of final perseverance. This Saturday we have the first Saturday of the month and as well as the first Saturday, it's also the Feast of Candle Mass. 
the feast of the presentation of the child Jesus in the temple and the purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the one day in the year in which candles are blessed with a special blessing to have the power against the devil and temptation and to give health of body and soul. And so if you'd like to bring your candles for that blessing, we encourage you to do so. Try and bring them the day before, or at least 15 minutes before the ceremony, which starts at 7.30 in the morning on Saturday for the blessing of candles. And then you'll be able to pick up your candles afterwards. Since it's candle mass, we will have the procession with the candles after them, after the blessing, and we will have the um, high mass to follow. So we need our choir and all our altar boys to be present for those ceremonies that we might do that worthily of the church for this important feast day of Mass. The boys of the Archconfraternity of St. Stephen are preparing to make their promises and to raise in rank, and so we'll have a meeting after Mass next Sunday for the altar boys to start preparing for their Archconfraternity of St. Stephen engagements. And a reminder of the boys' ice skating weekend, then it's a two weeks' time. There's still a couple of places available for that weekend. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Amen. I say to you, I have not found such great faith in Israel. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. The words of our divine Saviour praise the faith of this centurion, pagan though he was, but faith that he had in the person of our divine Saviour. Likewise the leper, who couldn't go to the Sermon on the Mountain because of his leprosy, but as soon as Jesus comes down from the mountain, he grabs him and says, You have the power. Heal me. He had faith in that power that Jesus had, do you will to do so? You can do it if you want. And of course, Jesus said, I will. And he was healed in that instant. It's universal. Throughout the gospel and all of the miracles that our divine Savior performed, he always asked for faith first. Take, for example, that woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. Who thought within herself, ha ha. If I just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And so she did it. And our Lord felt that power go out of him, and he turned to her and said to her, Great is your faith. You've been, because of your faith, you've been healed. Or take the example of the leader of the synagogue, Jairus whose daughter was sick to die. And so he came to ask Jesus to come and heal her. And as he was there talking, some servants came and said, don't worry, don't bother the master, she's dead. And our divine Savior interrupted and said to him, all things are possible for those who believe. Do you believe? And he said, yes. And so our divine Savior went, down and raised her from the dead. Every time it takes faith. Why is it then that our divine Savior asks faith as a prerequisite for him to show himself? We see this in another miracle performed to the man born blind, whom he healed, and then the Pharisees asked him, who healed you? He said, this man, Jesus of Nazareth, he healed me. But he couldn't do that, he's a sinner, they said. And the man said, look, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. But one thing I do know, that only God can give to a man the power to perform such a miracle as to heal a man born blind. Why don't you recognize it yourselves? He says to the Pharisees. They threw him out of the temple. Out of mind, Savior finds him and says to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? And he says, 
who is the Son of God? And Jesus said, it is he who is speaking with you now who healed you. And he says, yes, Lord, I do believe. And he knelt down in adoration. And the moral of the story is given by Jesus who said, and this is the judgment that the light is coming to the world. And they prefer the darkness to the light. And I've come that those who do not see might see, and those who see might not see. And what he means by that is those who do not see because they don't have faith in divine things might now have that faith. And those who think they know everything might understand their blindness. The Pharisees, of course, is those to whom he was directing that remark and they understood it perfectly well. Faith, then, is the beginning of the divine life in our souls. Faith is this most precious gift of God which opens our mind to eternal vistas, which broadens us to the things, the mysteries that we would not possibly know about without faith. Mysteries of God, of redemption, of the incarnation, of grace, of the sacraments, of the church, how to love God. We would know nothing about any of these things if it were not for faith. The amazing thing about faith is that gift of God as it is, which enables us to know things that we could not possibly know otherwise, is the gift which God does not take away from us. Once he's given us the faith through baptism or through the gift he gives to those who are searching the truth, it stays with us. A man might commit a sin. He might turn his back on God for a few years. But he still has the faith. And that faith is the basis for him to return. A man only loses the faith when by deliberately and on purpose he denies the faith, refuses to believe what God has revealed, and says, I don't want to believe in hell or purgatory or the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary or the sacraments. He refuses. He turns his back upon God. Otherwise, that faith is this gift which lifts us up to divine realities and which God gives to us. A marvelous gift. And that's why it is that our divine Savior asked faith. He wanted those who spoke to him and all of us to be open to this gift so that we can find in our faith the beginning of everlasting life, the root of our justification, as the Council of Trent says. It's the basis of all that we do for heaven, all the good that we can do, it's faith. But faith has different degrees. You know the story of the man whose son was possessed by the devil. And he cast himself into the fire and into the water because of the devil. And he brought his son to the apostles to cast out the devil from him. And they could not. Why not? Lack of faith. And Jesus rebuked them and said, O oh, incredulous generation! How long will I be with you? How long will I suffer you? Because they refused to believe. And then he turns to the man and says, Do you believe? And he says, Yes, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And so he cast out the devil in that instant and commanded that he depart, showing he truly is the Son of God with command over the evil spirits. But what's interesting here in this story is that the man prayed, I believe, but help my unbelief. He believed, but he did not believe enough. Yes, he had faith, but he wished it was more faith. And so he asked, and he got that extra gift of God. You can imagine, after seeing the miracle, how great was his faith. Now that prayer 
must be ours also. But you might say, but faith, how can it increase? We all have the same faith. If we didn't have the same faith, we would not be Catholic. We all believe in the same truths that God has revealed. And to have the faith, you have to believe all the truths that God has revealed. And also faith is not an opinion. It's not a probability. It's a certitude. And so if we are certain about our faith, it can increase. You have to be certain about faith to have faith. It's not possible any other way. So how can faith increase in our souls? Can we pray for an increase of faith? Yes. And it's fundamental to our spiritual lives to understand how it is that faith can and must increase in our souls so that we live this life filled with faith in Almighty God, in our Lord Jesus Christ. First way that faith can increase is we can understand better the teachings of our faith. We might believe all things that God has revealed, but we don't know all of our catechism. We don't know all of the truths of the faith. We haven't studied them. We can't defend them against errors. We can't prove them from sacred scripture or tradition. And so our faith is not well rooted in our minds. And so we have to study our faith so that we can understand it much better. That's one way in which faith can increase. There's another way too, in which faith must increase even in those who perhaps are too simple to understand the explanations of our faith. But they can also have a great faith. But it's not enough for our mind to believe that faith must be living inspired by charity, must produce effects in our lives and in our hearts. We must produce the works of faith. Now the works of faith are that our faith directs us so that our thoughts, our desires, our goals are all directed to the things of faith to please Almighty God, to, to do God's holy will, to give glory to God our Father, to accomplish His commandments. It's all motivated by faith. And if faith fills our souls, then we're longing to accomplish God's will. It's rooted in our souls, in our way of living. Another way in which faith increases, it might seem a little strange, is when we have temptations against the faith. Now, temptations against the faith are possible because faith is a gift of God. And because it's a gift of God, there is obscurity and darkness to the faith. And so we can sometimes have a temptation. How is it possible for God to be made man? How is it possible for God to be present in the Holy Eucharist? How can Christ be present at all the altars of the world at the same time. How can a woman be the mother of God? We have these temptations against the faith. And of course they're all mysteries that we don't fully understand, but which are divinely revealed. Now when we have temptations against the faith, what we do is make an act of faith in which we show the things that we believe in. And we overcome the temptation. And that purifies our faith so that we believe purely and simply because God has revealed who can neither deceive nor be deceived because he is the truth itself. And our faith grows stronger and stronger in our souls as we overcome temptations. And there's the mystery of faith as a gift of Almighty God. And that faith grows in us when we are able to see God's will in our daily lives. And that's another way in which faith can grow. When we have faith in Almighty God, in our Lord Jesus Christ, in His 
providence and care for us, then we are able to see the events of every day as coming from the hand of Almighty God. We have the abandonment to divine providence, to Almighty God who will never abandon us because we place ourselves entirely in his hands. We know that all things work to the good of those who love God. We have that confidence that comes from faith that everything has a purpose. The crosses, the pains, the difficulties, the misunderstandings, the sicknesses, the failures, the loss of a job and loss of a business and loss of this and that, loss of property, all fits into God's plan and it's all for our sanctification and he's all wise and makes all things for a purpose. Now when we have a strong faith, we see all these things as a part of God's plan for our souls. And we don't rebel or get depressed or sad or revengeful or angry or upset or malicious because of things that happen to us. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's the faith of Job. And it must be ours too. That faith then is a great one that grows in us as we go through every day. And to have that great faith, we just have to look back at the history, the story of our lives. It's only decades afterwards that we understand how things fit into God's plan. And we think, oh, oh. And then we're amazed how God has directed his graces throughout my life for the good of my soul. I didn't know it at the time. Perhaps I rebelled at the time but it all has a purpose. And then when I see that, I will have a great faith. It's very important for us to remember that our modern world does not want us to live by faith. It doesn't understand faith because it is unbelieving, incredulous. And so it has no understanding of this mystery which gives us the life of our soul, the love of God and his commandments and the desire to perform and accomplish his holy will in all things. No understanding. There are various ways in which the modern world wants to undermine and destroy our faith. First of all, by materialism by a preoccupation with the things that are exterior, money and possessions and success, houses and cars and clothes and food, all these exterior things, all of which we need, all of which God gives us, but we must not be attached to them. Seek first the kingdom of God and his justice, and all these things will be given to you besides, says the sacred scripture. And so, Remember, the world's materialism is striving to destroy our faith and we have to fight against it by rising to a higher level. It's another way, too, in which the world tries to destroy our faith and it's by indifferentism. Some people will say, oh, faith is a good thing. It doesn't matter what faith you have. You can believe whatever you want, but you have to believe in something. It doesn't matter what religion you believe in whether it's Christian or pagan, or whether it's a different denomination amongst Christian religions, doesn't matter as long as you have faith. Now this is the undermining of all objective truth and objective faith. That indifferentism, that it doesn't matter what you believe in, means that faith is not important. Because when we have faith, we believe in the truth that God has revealed and told us. And so indifferentism, which is characteristic of our modern world, is the main cause of the destruction of faith in our modern day. Ignorance of divine revelation and truth produces indifferentism. And that is the way of the modern world to undermine our faith. But let us have a strong faith. We find this mentioned by St. Paul in his letter to the Hebrews. And he describes the faith of the patriarchs of the Old Testament and points out without faith it is not possible to be pleasing to God. 
But we must believe that God exists and rewards the good and the evil. That faith is fundamental to our daily lives. And he gives the examples. Abel. Why was Abel's sacrifice acceptable to God? Because of his faith. Noah. Noah's faith in building the ark for a hundred years was rewarded when he survived the flood. The faith of Abraham when he left his land to try to find the promised land. Or when he offered his son Isaac on Mount Moriah. Or the faith of Moses when he said, No, I'm not the son of the daughter of Pharaoh. I'm a Hebrew. And he went to suffer with his own people. Or the faith of Moses when he took his people across the Red Sea and escaped from Egypt in the search for the promised land. And he goes on throughout the whole of the Old Testament how faith characterized these great figures. And his conclusion is this. Let us run with patience in the fight prepared for us following the author and finisher of our faith, our Lord Jesus Christ, who, despising the shame of the cross, embraced it for us and now sits in the right hand of God the Father. How our faith finds its culmination then in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, who opens for us the gates of the kingdom of heaven. How then we must live by faith. For the just man lives by faith. And so let's think of how we can live by faith. How often we have failed to do so. We've gone through our daily, daily chores and duties without thinking of God or eternity or God's plan for our lives. We have rebelled so often against the events that have happened to us. We have not carried our faith in our daily lives. We say our prayers, but we don't live by faith. And when we live by faith, we direct everything towards Almighty God. We acknowledge that everything belongs to Him, and we don't belong to our own selves. We offer ourselves up. We have this eternal dimension to everything that we do. And that's what gives peace of soul, tranquility, and the ability to practice charity at all times. Because we're not preoccupied with our own selves. Faith gives us preoccupation with Almighty God, His honor, His glory, His kingdom. And so we're free from our own selves. And that's why it is that faith broadens our minds and our souls, our intentions and our desires, and gives us a greatness of heart that we need to follow and imitate the example of Christ our Savior. And so, let's beg, as we assist at the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, for a strong faith, an unshakable faith, a deep faith, a faith that penetrates all of my thoughts and desires. A faith that comes with me on my every day. And a faith that allows me to vanquish the world around me with all of its materialism and its indifferentism. For they're the words of St. John. For this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
back as old. We brought in us our minutes, they brought in us and salute them, they shed it, they cherished. We think an agonist, they spirit into some hope, expiry of each. And of a fact of which he fixes it upon a beast, so upon the obelacto, as who says the potos, the resurrected Siadine, second.
Te fratele Iisus, este putea în fratele omnipotente. Suci, Fia Domnului, sacrificiul de mă nevoiesc, ad laudem e gloria în nomeni Sfânt, atulitat în copul nostru am te duiscuve Eclesie Sfânt Sfânt. Sentimus, 
Odin confessione per il sempite di quei dei e le persone proprietas e le nessenze a unitas e le maestate ad orretore qualitas quam la l'angeli a que agangeli che lo vinco que axerabim Qui non c'è sangra mare quotidi e una voce discente. Santo, 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 sto meno stessa. Io sono cerita la gloria tua sana in eccessi. Benedictus qui venite in ogni bambino. O sana in eccessi.
pe pecătorii mei. Omnia secola secolo Olemus precepteți la lutare vostru monitii Pe divinistruzione pomati a Deus dicele Pater noste, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, a venia regnum tuum, via voluntas tua, sicud in cielo et in terra. Pane nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis de vita nostra, sicure nos dimitimus de vitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem. Secola, secolo, ac stamini sit sempre avvisco.
Domine non sundimus. Domine non sundimus. Domine non sundimus. Misteriato veste, omnipotens Deus, et dimis spiccatis veste, spedicat vostra de vita veteranam. Indulgentiam absolutis, tiene mire mis, tiene peccatolum vesto, juntiva bobis omnipotens, et misericos dominus. Ecce agnus Dei, ecce quittulli de peccato mundi, Domine non su dignus rinta e su tecto meum, se tanto dic verbo est in abito anima mea, Domine non su dignus rinta e su tecto meum, se tanto dic verbo est in abito anima mea, Domine non su dignus rinta e su tecto meum, se tanto dic verbo est in abito, anima mea. Opus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristo, custodietà di non tua vita, Opus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristo, custodietà di non tua vita, vita di non tua vita, Opus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristo, custodietà di non tua vita, vita di non tua vita, Opus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristo, custodietà di non tua vita, vita di non tua vita, Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, custodia di non tua vita. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, custodia di non tua vita. In vita, vita, vita. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, custodia di non tua vita. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, custodia di non tua vita. Corpus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, custodia di non tua vita. 
proposto a me, no? Sì, io sono Cristo, questo è il mio amore. Invita me, te ne va. Copesto mi lo sia se Cristi, questo rieta ne mancia mi vita, mi te ne va. Copesto mi lo sia se Cristi, questo rieta ne mancia mi vita, mi te ne va. Copesto mi lo sia se Cristi, questo rieta ne mancia mi vita, mi te ne va. Copesto mi lo sia se Cristi, questo rieta ne mancia mi vita, mi te ne va. Copesto mi lo sia se Cristi, questo rieta ne mancia mi vita, mi te ne va. Copus Domino, si è su Cristi, questo rieta ne mancia mi vita, mi te. Copus Domino, si è su Cristi, questo rieta ne mancia mi vita, mi te. Copus Domino, si è su Cristi, questo rieta ne mancia mi vita, mi te. Copus Domino, si è su Cristi, questo rieta ne mancia mi vita, mi te. Copus Domino, si è su Cristi, questo rieta ne mancia mi vita, mi te. Opus Domino Nostri Gesù Cristo, il Cristo di Eta di Mantuano, in vita, in vita, in vita, in vita. Opus Domino Nostri Gesù Cristo, il Cristo di Eta di Mantuano, in vita, in vita. Opus Domino Nostri Gesù Cristo, il Cristo di Eta di Mantuano, in vita, in vita, in vita. Opus Domino Nostri Gesù Cristo, il Cristo di Eta di Mantuano, in vita, in vita, in vita. Copus Domino Nostri Gesù Cristo, il Cristo di Eta di Mantuano, in vita, in vita. Copus Domino Nostri Gesù Cristo, il Cristo di Eta di Mantuano, in vita, in vita. Copus Domino Nostri Gesù Cristo, il Cristo di Eta di Mantuano, in vita, in vita. Copus Domino Nostri Gesù Cristo, il Cristo di Eta di Mantuano, in vita, in vita. Copus Domino Nostri Gesù Cristo, il Cristo di Eta di Mantuano, in vita, in vita. Copus Domino Nostri Gesù Cristo, il Cristo di Eta di Mantuano, in vita, in vita. Opus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Opus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Opus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Opus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Opus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Opus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Opus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Opus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita. Copus Domini Nostri Gesù Cristi, questo di Eta di Mantua mi vita, mi vita.
grabado hombres de Jesús que procede de ofrecer. No me nos pobres Bastantes tomen la chile o de misterios, pues somos, o de fe de vos no se llaman ver la chile a tarde de ingenieros. Pero tomen un nostro, me es un Cristo, un vino tu, que te convive de reina de unidad de Espíritu Santo y de Dios. Per omnia secola secolo Amen. Dominus Pavescom Benedica de vos, omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Dominus de Vobisco. Inizio Santi Evangelii, secondo mio anno. In principio era il verbo, il verbo era il tapo di Deo, il verbo era il verbo, il occhio era il tempo di Dio, il verbo di Deo. Omni perivso, pato sole e sinivso, pato e mesmitico, pato e sinivso, vite e rate, vite e rato, siamo in noi sintene, visto il cere, tene, pae, e io non comprende il mondo, cui da un misto sa Deo, come il nome era Giovannes, e venite in testimonio, o testimonio per liberare il lumine, o domine, e scadere per il lumine, non era tere luce, o testimonio per liberare il lumine, era lux vera, quel lumine, domine, momine, venite in un comune, il mondo era del mondo spiritoso, il fatto è che il mondo sia una cambia vita. In proprio è finito, è suo e non è c'è per lui. Poi quella fine non è c'è per lui, 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 non